and beloved brothers, alhamdulillah, within, within our midst we have none other than Sheikh Mawlana Tahir Sandu, Sheikh Mawlana Tahir Sandu, qualified as an alim in South Africa, alhamdulillah was an excellent student during his days, and Allah chose him to be an imam in a masjid in Makkah. And alhamdulillah, Sheikh has a very, very close relationship with many of the ulama and many of the imams of the haram. He's also had the opportunity to perform the salah in Masjid al-Aqsa. And alhamdulillah, he's also known for his oratory skills and for one who reaches out, especially to the youth. So inshallah, since time is limited, without further ado, we'll call upon Sheikh Muhammad Tahir Sadduq to address us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi ladina as-safa amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Faman zuhziha 'anil nar wa udkhila al-jannata faqad faz. Sadaqallahu al-'azim. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created us, sustained us and above all created us in the best of ummah. It is the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many opportunities to thank Him. Many occasions in life, people are praying for that which we already have. If we have sight, then there are people in the world who are praying that Allah gives them the ability to see. We've got health, there are people who are making dua for health. Those who have got a home, a roof above them, there are people who are making dua for that. Very often in life, we count the things that we don't have. And we always say, I don't have this and I don't have this and I still need to get that. But sometimes in life, we need to start counting what we actually do have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been so kind on us. And Allah has given us so many opportunities in life to thank Him. And we should take those opportunities. My topic for today is success. What is success? What is the definition of success? Some would say that success is when I achieve a certain amount of money. Some would say that success is when I get a certain position. Some would say success is when I'm famous. But truly, you and I cannot answer that question. The only person who can answer that is the creator of the earth and the skies. The creator who created you and I and knows why he created us is the only one who can give us a definition. And Allah has defined what is success. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ The one who has saved himself from Jahannam, from hell, and has secured his entrance into paradise, فَقَدْ فَازِ He is successful. There is no other definition of success. So if a person sleeps his entire life on the street corner homeless, he does not know where his next meal is coming from. But he has saved himself from Jahannam, from hell, and he is successful. And a person may live in a palatial home with all the comforts of this world. And he could have a 10 course meal that is prepared by the best chefs. And he could have the most expensive commodities in his home. But if he does not save himself from Jahannam and secure his entrance into paradise, then he is unsuccessful. This definition is an all-encompassing definition. Normally, now we would ask, how do I acquire this? There are many ways to secure Jannah. There are many ways to secure paradise. There is a day when this, de when this decision will be made and then it's the day of Qiyamah. There is a day when people will be distressed because it is one of the most important decisions in our life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how will we be able to be successful on that day when this important decision of success is made? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, مَنْ فَرَّجَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً if you remove a difficulty of a person in this world, then Allah will in turn remove a difficulty of yours on the day of Qiyam. If you remove the difficulty of a person in this world, 
whether it means that you were driving and you saw an elderly person, Muslim or non-Muslim, and you got off your car and you said to this person, let me help you across the road. You've removed an obstacle, a difficulty from a person in this world. If you saw an elderly person carrying something and you got off or you were walking and you went and you said to this elderly person, be it Muslim or non-Muslim, you said to this person, let me assist you, then you have removed the difficulty of a person in this world. When you have shown good character, then you have done yourself a favor by securing your Jannah. Allah has given us so many examples of how to achieve this success. Wealth can be the means of success if wealth is acquired and spent in the correct path. Let me give you an example. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. On one occasion, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa asked for the Muslims to donate. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the Muslims required wealth. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, who will give for the cause of Allah? And Allah will reward him. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's wealth became a success to an extent that when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was leaving his home to go and give whatever he had committed to, he was feeling the wall in his home, in the darkness. And his wife said to him, oh Abu Bakr, what are you doing? He said, I recall I had a needle and I had placed it somewhere here in the wall. I committed today that I'm going to give all my wealth for Allah. I don't even want to leave this one needle behind. That is why I'm looking for it. When Abu Bakr came in front of Rasulullah and he said, Oh Nabi of Allah, here is my wealth. We asked him a question, Kam tarakta li ahlik? Abu Bakr, how much have you left at home for your family? He says, Oh Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever I possess is here, taraktullah wa rasoolah, the only thing I could leave for my family was Allah and His Rasul. That is success in wealth. Abu Umar Uthman radiallahu anhu, heard of a well, the water of which was very sweet and palatable. So he approached the owner of this well who was charging exorbitant amounts for water. Uthman radiallahu anhu went up to him and said, allow me to purchase this well. The man said, I'm not selling it. So Uthman radiallahu anhu said, okay, sell me 50%, half. So the man agreed. So he paid him. Uthman radiallahu anhu then came to the people and said, my day will be one day, the next day will belong to the other owner. On my day, whoever takes water, it is free, I will not charge for the water. So what people did was they said, instead of going on the day after Uthman radiallahu anhu's turn and pay, we rather go on his day, it's free. Eventually the owner of the 50% came to him and said, Oh Uthman, please buy the other percentage as well. So Uthman radiallahu anhu bought the other 50%. He now owns the entire well. He goes out to the people and says, Oh people, rejoice. I have bought the entire well. I now own it. Take as much water as you want. It is charity. But look at what success in wealth meant for them. And look what success in life for us means. We have got a perception and a definition that the more wealth that I have, the more successful I am. And Sahaba believed that the more wealth we gave, the more successful we were. To understand and to know the net worth of any of the companions of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you would not be able to ascertain their net wealth, their net worth by what they owned, but rather by what they spent. Huge difference. Sahaba was such that they gave and that is what made them so successful in terms of even wealth. On one occasion, Aisha radiallahu anha said that I heard the entire ground in Medina was shaking. So she called someone and said, go and find out what is going on. Why is the ground shaking? So they came back and they said, a caravan of a caravan of one of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, Abdurrahman bin Awf, radiallahu anhum, 700 laden camels has just entered Medina. The force of this camels and the, whip of the, and the weight of this goods was such that the entire ground was shaking. When this, all of this wealth came into Medina, Aisha anha sent a message to Abdurrahman bin Awf and saying that tell him, I said, Barakallahu fi ma a'ta. May Allah bless you with regard to what you have given. a'lam. But tell him that the reward of the akhirah, of the hereafter, is a lot more for the charity that he gives. What did he do? 
Abdurrahman bin Awf makes an announcement. He says, whoever is needy in Medina, please come and take whatever you want from all of my goods. Whatever is here, 700 camels, whoever wants anything, come and take it. وَثَوَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَعْلَمْ The reward of the Akhirah is much, much more. That was securing success in wealth. Position. How did Sahaba secure success in position? Khalid bin Walid was a leader of the Muslims at one given time. People started worshipping and started attributing the success of Islam to Khalid bin Walid So Umar realized that the belief of people is becoming corrupted. So he sent a particular Sahabi and said to him, you will now be the leader of that area Go and tell Khalid bin Walid that he is no longer in charge of this, of this aspect of the Muslims. When this man came forward and he came to Khalid bin Walid what did Khalid bin Walid do? Understand that he is in a position of authority and that position is now being taken away. When this man comes to him with the letter, Khalid bin Walid opens the letter, he reads it and he understands that I am no longer in charge. My position has been taken away. Khalid bin Walid stands up immediately. He takes off the turban from his head. He places it on this Sahabi and he tells him, Use me however you want. I am now your servant at your feet. That is how Sahaba saw success in position. What is our definition of success in position? Umar bin Khattab was the leader of the Muslims. He was Khalifa. He was a leader. On one occasion, he traveled to a particular province and in this place, he requested some water to drink. So someone brought some water to him and Umar took a sip and then he said, Wallahi inna wula tayyib. This water is very sweet. So people said to him, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, هذا ماء قد شيب بعسل. O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, this is water, but we've put some honey in it to sweeten it for you. Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu an, the Khalifa al-Muslimin, is given water out of honor. He takes his water, he takes a sip, and he starts crying profusely. He puts the water down. And people say to him, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, why are you crying? He says, I recall the ayat of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are on the day of Qiyamah, a group of people will come before Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them that I gave you all the bounties in the world, there is nothing left for you now in the Akhirah. Umar says, I fear that even if the water of the world has become sweet for Umar, on the day of Qiyamah, I don't want Allah to tell me, oh Umar, you got all the goodness in the world, there is nothing left for you in the Akhirah. That is success in position. Sahaba anhum understood that success comes through serving the creation of Allah. Any living object, any living creature was served by them because they knew that there is success. What did Nabi Sallallahu say? A dog was walking that was very thirsty and a woman took her sock, she took out some water from the well and she gave it to this dog and Allah gave her paradise because she fed a dog. Looking after any creation of Allah is success because it will please Allah. A woman kept a cat in her home and she did not feed the cat and Allah gave her hell because why? Allah said you did not take care of my creation. Today in the world there are those who have made it their mission to serve humanity. There are those foundations I can personally vouch for an organization that I know of, which is also here in the UK, the Ali Dad Foundation, and I've seen with my eyes how they serve humanity. Amazing. You go into the middle of the desert and you see they are being given things to eat and they are given supplies that they need and you wonder to yourself that how has this aid reached into the desert and you realize that for some the objective in life has been to serve humanity that is true success in this particular place i'll terminate with this one little incident we go into the deserts 
And subhanallah, we come to a particular tent. And in this tent there is a mother who has got five children. So we come into this tent and I see this mother has got five children but there are only four in her tent. This is a refugee who left Syria with absolutely nothing and had to flee for their lives and now they are in the Jordanian desert. So I come in and I ask the mother that your documentation says you have five children. How is it possible there are only four in the tent? She says, the other one is my son. I've kicked him out of the tent. So I ask her, why have you kicked him out? It's dangerous. There are snakes and scorpions out in the desert, in the heat of the desert. Why have you kicked him out? She said, he must find your salah. So I told her, you must have been a very religious orientated family back in Syria. She says, no, my son. At times, we wouldn't even pray our Jum'ah salah. We wouldn't even perform our Jum'ah salah. So when we left and, we, and Allah took away everything from us there, I came here and I told my children that now if we turn our backs on Allah, then Allah will even take away this little tent that this foundation has given us, then we have absolutely nothing. She says, I made a rule that if anyone misses Fajr, they are out of the tent. That is success when we realize that Allah is the one in charge. Allah is the one that gives us whatever we want. Allah is the one that is the provider. That is true success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with success in this world. And may Allah bless us with success in the akhirah. Success will come. You know, when we will create an impact amongst the people around us by showing them the true character of Islam. Then we are successful. When you are driving and there is a car that is on the oncoming side that needs to turn and you stop and you give them way then you're a successful Muslim because you have showed the character of a Muslim when you are waiting for a parking bay and you've already indicated to go into that parking bay and someone comes from somewhere else and they see you waiting and they jump the queue and they took your parking bay and you say it's okay it's okay you show good character then you're a Muslim because Nabi Sallallahu said the weightiest thing in your scale of deeds on the Akhirah will be what? Good character. When you are walking and you see a non-Muslim, a person who is not even of your faith, but you give them way to walk, or you assist a person in the shop, or you assist somebody who needs help, and you do it, why? Because you are a Muslim and that is what your religion teaches you. Then you have achieved success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us successful in this world Amen. and in the akhirah. Amen. May Allah bless all of you that are here. Beautiful faces that I see. May Allah protect all of these faces from Jahannam. Amen. May Allah make all of you a means of success in this world and in the akhirah. May Allah bless your community. May Allah bless your country. May Allah bless each and every one of you.